Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us and Happy New Year everyone. This is part two of the quarantine system and in part one, just to recap, we dimensioned up some lumber, we built the stand, we clad it with some MDF to make for um, smoother painting. We made uh, just a glorified bookshelf for on top to house some gear and this is kind of where we ended up. We also made the sumps and also made the overflows. So in this video we're going to be going over the lighting and plumbing and some uh, talk about coral quarantining. When it comes to lighting for a coral quarantine system, my philosophy is to make the lighting as close to your actual display tank lighting as possible, so the transition for the corals into your display tank is pretty seamless. So since we're using a T5 LED hybrid system on the display tank, we're going to be using the same in the coral quarantine system. To make the lighting hood, we're starting with some really inexpensive aluminum angle. I think these pieces are like five or six bucks a stick. And we're just gonna make a frame, paint it white for a little bit of corrosion resistance, but I've had um, aluminum over tanks for years with no corrosion. And uh, we're just gonna put all of our uh, components into it. So in part one, we talked a little bit about fish quarantine, and let's talk a little bit about coral quarantine in this installment. Coral quarantining is extremely useful. If you can swing it, uh, it is great to help prevent uh, pests from getting into your main display system. You know, nothing is foolproof, and there are obviously varying degrees to which you can uh, quarantine corals. The challenge I find with coral quarantining is striking a balance between the amount of time the corals are in quarantine and the kind of impact the quarantine process has on them. Uh, if you're doing a coral quarantine correctly, I really think that rather than having a system which is constantly up and running and you're just cycling corals through it, is to, is to start from scratch. So you start with a sterile system and you don't have any fish in there, no snails or hermit crabs or any other uh, critters that could also be a vector for other pests that could could hitchhike on their shells. And so you start with a sterile system. I start a quarantine cycle with tank water from the display tank and biological media um, from the display tank. So you have everything you need for biological filtration in the water. So I typically quarantine coral for between 30 and 45 days. And that tends to be enough time for any of the kind of macro pests that you can see with the naked eye, such as Aptasia, bubble algae, anything else like that crops up and you can take care of it. I also definitely believe in running pretty heavy UV on a coral quarantine system to take care of any of uh, ictomonts or anything else that's in the water column that you can't see with the naked eye. It's usually around the 30 to 45 day mark where the challenge of maintaining a pretty low water volume in a quarantine system makes keeping it any longer than that, at least for me, problematic. Um, I tend to get more algae and uh, cyanobacteria sometimes, and that's just because it's obviously it's a new system because you're starting from scratch each time and you don't have algae control critters to take care of any of the algae like you would in a display tank. Now, if you're gonna quarantine for less than a full 76 days, this also assumes that you have prepped the corals very extensively before they go into your quarantine system. And by that I mean you've dipped them and you have made sure, and this is really, really important, to cut off the coral from any coral plug that they have come in on. And cut them off in such a way that you are leaving a little bit of the flesh behind. Um, the area on a coral plug or on a coral which most often harbors pests or eggs is the underside of a coral on a coral plug. So uh, cut the coral off from the coral plug, leave a little bit of flesh behind if you can, and make sure that you're dipping things very, very well so then when you bring them into your quarantine system, you're that much further ahead. Maintaining water quality in a coral quarantine system, at least for me, is actually more difficult than maintaining water quality in my display tank. It's a smaller water volume and you don't have the typical nutrient inputs that you would in a regular display tank when you're feeding fish. So uh, I start with, again, display tank water which gives me kind of a nutrient uh, baseline in the water. And then I dose phytoplankton amino acids and feed the corals that can be fed. And for calcium and alkalinity, I usually just 
dose Kalkwasser, which tends to be very adequate for a small group of corals that you're quarantining at one time. And because you do have to kind of keep your finger on the pulse of these smaller quarantine systems, at a point in time when a lot of the fish and corals that come into them are at their most fragile point, these systems will be kitted out with the same type of uh, apex monitoring equipment and probes, etc., um, that you would use on a regular display tank. So we're going to fast forward a little bit here to present day, and this is what the quarantine systems look like as they're running today. As I mentioned in the previous video, there were a lot of delays in getting the main display tank set up. So this quarantine system was actually built about a year ago, and this is its current uh, form. The fish system is about 40 gallons, and the coral system is about 30 gallons, just because the extra water volume for quarantine larger fish is a little bit better. I have uh, a UV, which I can switch between them and this is caulkwasser and some nitrate and phosphate which sometimes I have to dose in the coral system. The sumps are mirror images of each other each with uh, bean animal overflows and the fish system is fallow right now. Uh, I still haven't cleaned it up after the last quarantine cycle. The fish system right now just has a set of T5s in there as well as uh, a regular light bulb actually and that's just because UV light from some T5 bulbs can actually degrade medications in a quarantine system so just be cognizant of that. And this is the coral light that you saw me building and this system is just kind of getting ready for corals at this point. And I will eventually build uh, <laughs> some doors for this upper cabinet that houses all the equipment. So yes, this is a bit of a cable uh, rat's nest right now. I'm also running for each tank a Renko temperature controller, which is in addition to monitoring by the Apex. When I first built these systems, they each had a glass tank, uh, just a regular kind of Aquion all glass tank. One of them uh, sprung a leak, and then I lost faith in the other one, so I ended up building these two acrylic tanks at the end of the day. And each of the sumps has a drain, which allows me to just crack a valve and completely drain down these systems, which is great for resetting them between each quarantine cycle. And you can see the biological media I just transferred over from the display tank and also a little computer fan, which uh, helps with cooling a little bit. So that's it for the fish and quarantine system. We'll be getting back to the regular sequence of the build in the next video. And actually in the next video, the tanks finally arrive. So that'll be exciting. Thanks again for following along and my best to you and yours in 2022.